most single women are confused about how men fall in love and what makes us choose a romantic partner. It's natural to imagine we make decisions the same way, but the truth is there are a few key differences in how men fall in love and choose a partner. So today I want to point out five ways men choose a romantic partner differently from women. So armed with this wisdom, you can exponentially raise your chances of getting the devotion, the love, and the commitment you want without wasting time. I want to have a heart to heart with you today because I believe you deserve to find love and you deserve to find love without struggling and you deserve to find love without maybe pressing the brake and the accelerator at the same time. So in other words, a few distinctions and a few differences in the way you approach dating, in the way you understand men can make all the difference in the world between you struggling for years or finding this year the lifelong partner you've been searching for. Now, my goal for you today is not just so that you gain some knowledge, but that you put into action maybe one of the ideas I'm sharing and notice for yourself the difference. And when you notice maybe an advantage or you see better results or stronger connection, that you get motivated and you get inspired to use the rest of what I'm sharing here. I'm going to share five key differences in the way men choose women versus women choose men. And I want to caveat this whole thing by saying, these are going to be some generalizations. There are always going to be exceptions to the rule. There's always going to be guys who do it differently from the way I'm sharing. And there's always going to be women who maybe don't resonate with this. So rather than sharing in a comment, all humans are different. Of course, all humans are different. They're also similar. They're also patterns that if you really listen to, you might benefit from gaining that ability to see a chessboard and see five moves ahead instead of trying to work so hard at proving or demonstrating things that are not really important to guys. The first key difference in the way men choose women is men care very little about your social status. With some exceptions to the rule, guys who are kind of gold diggers, the majority of guys could not care if you make a lot less than they do, if you have a great job, if you have lots of savings. Obviously, if you're severely struggling and you're needing his help, there might be some resistance, but the truth is you are far more likely to evaluate a guy and cut him off if he doesn't have the financial backbone or the social status than he does. So what does that mean to you? Don't lead with that. If you are in a great financial position, I'm not saying hide it, but he couldn't care less. Like that's not an asset to you in your search for love. That's not something that he's going to say, wow, I found this beautiful woman and she's loaded. He doesn't really care about that. So use other ways of approaching, of connecting that don't have you working so hard at showing that. Or on the other side of the coin, if you're someone who's not necessarily set off financially, don't feel like you have to get all your financial ducks in a row before you start dating. Because as I said, most guys are going to value other things beyond the financial stability, even if, though that's something that you might be looking for. Number two is you are probably going to want to feel chemistry and connection, but not at the risk of feeling the safety that you're looking for, right? You are wanting to create a connection with a guy who is stable, with a guy who's grounded, with a guy who knows who he is, what he wants in the world. In other words, you are looking for a combination of excitement and safety. And it's not that he's not looking for safety, but he's going to want to feel alive. If he doesn't feel alive, that safety you're needing is not going to be shown to you. And how does he feel alive? He feels alive when he connects with your life force, when he connects with your capacity to really love your life, to connect to that part of you that is radiant and alive and excited and purposeful and meaningful and open and loving. When he has that energy with you, his security, the showing up, being consistent, being grounded, is going to be far more likely to be flooded into your direction that if he doesn't feel that. So if you're one of those women who are obviously seeking that emotional and that intensity and that chemistry, but have a strong need for groundedness, do not lead with a groundedness because he needs to feel alive to care about that roundedness you may have to offer. Number three, guys are going to be even more visually attracted than you are. Here's the truth. The needle has turned and more and more each day, each year, 
women are looking for guys who are physically attractive. That's not been the case in the entirety of dating because women have typically, even though they wanted that, have wanted some emotional connection and other needs that are not just physical in nature first. Here's the thing. He's going to want to feel attracted to you to move the needle forward. And that does not mean that you have to look like a supermodel. There are plenty of supermodel looking women who have pretty bad energy, who are entitled in some way, who have this cold energy chip on their shoulders, which is incredibly turning off to men. There's something you have control over that has nothing to do with the DNA you were born with. And that is your energy. You can have a woman who is by the book, a supermodel who has mediocre energy and someone who is fully connected to her radiance, who's smiling, who's generous, who's sensual because she's connected to the truth of what makes her feel alive. And that woman get a disproportionate level of attention, even though in theory, the other woman should get more attention. Why? Because the same thing I was talking about before, guys want to feel alive. When you show up with attractive energy, you are far more appealing. You're far more magnetic. Now, if you're dealing with online dating, it's harder to show that if you don't have a great picture. The great picture doesn't mean that a professional photographer took it, although there's nothing wrong if you want to go that route, but that the expression of you, the radiance of you is clearly captured on that snapshot. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, why don't guys have to do it? Here's the truth. If you want to get what you want, act in the way the world is versus the way you wish the world worked. And if you do yourself the 1% challenge of putting yourself out there in a way that really shows your energy, you'll be far more likely to be contacted by men. Now, if you do go out in the real world, which is also recommended, then bring your energy, bring your aliveness, bring your connection, and you'll feel far more pursuit coming your way. Now, before I share my last two differences, which are very important to know about, if you're a single woman watching this, I'm willing to bet you are not aware of the true root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every continent, every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, and helping those women who sometimes have never had the love they wanted to really create the connection they want and to get lifelong partners. And I created a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that's going to show you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds or so, you'll have two things the elusive answer to the question when you're still single and a custom report that's going to share based on your specific blind spots, the number one action you can take starting today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fourth difference in the way men connect versus women is you want a guy primordially who is resourceful. You want a guy who can kick ass and take names, but also be sensitive. You want a guy who knows where he's going. You want a guy who is really the kind of person who doesn't get stopped by challenges, who's able to thrive in the midst of difficult situations. He's not looking for that necessarily. He doesn't mean that he wouldn't enjoy if you have some resourcefulness. It's like, he's not looking for a hero in his life. He's looking to feel needed. So here's the challenge. A lot of women who are incredibly resourceful show up and try to solve a guy's problems and try to show how awesome they are. It's not that that's wrong. It's just that that's not what's going to make a guy feel attracted. Just because you feel attracted to a guy who is that way doesn't mean that a guy is going to feel attracted to your energy when it shows up that way. Which again, it's not to show you should dumb it down or, or hide it, but there's going to be something that's far more important to him, which is to feel needed. If you're like such an independent badass that you don't need a guy, then he's not going to put his energy into you. He's going to go with someone who's less intelligent, less beautiful, less accomplished, but needs him. So if you learn nothing else from this video than to really understand how you can show without faking it, without dumbing things down, how you need a guy in your life, how he can add value to your life, then he's far more likely to be incredibly resourceful for you because he understands there's a true need in your heart for him. The last difference that I'll share is that you typically want to feel desired, wanted by the right guy. And it's not that he doesn't want to feel desired and wanted. He does, but he wants to feel admired first. If he feels desired for his hot body, but doesn't feel admired, he's going to feel like there's something missing. Why? Because he's going to validate himself in great ways. This is how men are socialized, fortunately or unfortunately 
to seek that validation in that way from the woman he's with. So the clearer you are about the ways you truly admire him, granted, he has to be admirable for you to show that. But if he is and you're not sharing it, you're cutting yourself short because that's one of those things that's going to activate his desire for you because now he feels she's beautiful, she's smart, and she needs me and she admires me. I need to continue showing up. Her identity of me is one of greatness. I need to continue showing up greatly to make sure that I'm doing my part. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. If it is, it means the world to me and to my channel because this is how I grow and can reach more women. If you click like and subscribe, if you find someone who needs to hear this, please share this, send it their way. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.